What's going on, guys? Check this out. I received a pretty annoying comment over on TikTok. Now, actually, this commenter replied to uh, a supporter of mine, and I support her material as well, uh, unapologetically biracial and proud, who's a mulatto woman who's doing great work. I appreciate her content. And this guy the, the on TikTok, I believe he updated his username to like Mr. Bantu. Right? So he's been watching me. A lot of them, you know, they, they've been watching me. But um, I ended up just blocking this guy, whatever, because I get annoyed with these kind of pro whack troll types, right? So after a while, I just kind of block him. But I saw this reply he did to her, and I just kind of wanted to bring this comment over here and talk about it because it's obviously very congruent. We're going to see the similar, the consistent theme that the pro wax push in regards to their relationship with us mulattoes. Reading the comment, he puts, you clearly don't know much about the one drop rule and it shows. He has a laughing emoji. And then he puts, you were used as a buffer class to reinforce white supremacy and your dad would have been deleted or enslaved for mixing. Now, he's replying to unapologetically biracial and proud, who's a mulatto woman that has a white father and a black mother, which historically, a lot of the mulattoes, that's how majority of mulattoes or biracials, we can say, were produced at that time of a couple hundred years ago, a few hundred years ago, right? Even centuries ago in the Gold Coast in West Africa and other places in Europe, etc. But um, we kind of see the reverse now in the United States where or in other Western nations, the UK, Canada, where for, you know, majority of biracial people we see today uh, have black fathers, white mothers. So but with these type of characters, these pro wax, they always get things confused. They always try to kind of spin the narrative to fit their, you know, uh, agenda. And that's what we often see with them regarding his comment, talking about you were used as a buffer class and you don't know the history of the one drop rule. Yeah, these people, they're not going to educate us on anything, OK, except for how to buck dance in front of white people. I mean, that's what they're going to educate you on. But I just wanted to point out the fact is they always spread this buffer class conspiracy theory in regards to us. And all they can offer us is just resentment, hostility and trolling at this point. That's why this guy had to block him. But I just want to share with you guys more proof that, you know, we see this consistently across social media. Okay, over YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, it's the same consistent theme. This is how they are positioning themselves in relation to us. And they're trying to basically kowtow you mulattoes to accept a subordinate position to them truly despicable i mean that's why i laugh i'm like bro i'm i'm not like you i've been saying that before kendrick i am not in your club or on your team i am not like you when i see these little stupid buffer class comments and white supremacy and all this stuff i'm like yeah you just gotta get the hell away from them because they mean you no good and then this is another comment that i received over on tiktok as well you can see it says philly man 2020 foe and you can see the uh, avatar, it's the green, black, and red, which is Pan-African colors. And it says, proud black man. He's so damn proud that he's got to troll mulattoes on TikTok. Yeah, that shows, yeah, he, it shows he's not proud at all, which is very typical with them. Look at his comment. So this one's directly uh, uh, replying to me. And I believe this comment, I was actually on unapologetically biracial and proud's uh, TikTok page. And so because I always defend her in the comments, she defends me on in my uh, channel. So vice versa. And uh, so I was basically kind of challenging some of the detractors over on her video. And then this guy kind of replied to my comment and chimed in. Look at here. Look what he puts. You are the reason why I have disdain for mulattoes. <laughs> I'm the reason. Little old me. Nobody special. Just a little guy with the some balls and a big mouth on the internet. I'm the reason why he has to stay. Now, he already had basically preconceived notions and biases before. These people just want justification for their jealousy. That's it. He puts here, you speak negatively about black people because you have your face up white asses. <laughs> really? My face is not up white asses unless it's uh, 
white female I'm attracted to, but that's beside the point. Okay, nobody's more of a white ass kisser than these quote unquote proud black men, right? And they're kissing everyone's butt. Stop the cap. I mean, stop the cap. We all see it. It's all the evidence is here. And that's how I basically position my social media is to show the evidence. Let the public see. Hey, they say one thing on the internet, but then when you analyze their behavior, it kind of contradicts itself. It's like, well, wait a second. You're the one that's actually crying to white people when you don't get your way. You're the one who's sucking up to them, kissing their butt, begging for their approval. But they always try to kind of spin the narrative to throw it back in your face like, oh, it's really you that's doing that. And there's a this is you're the reason why I don't like mulattoes. You didn't like us in the first place. You were jealous of us. You were envious of us. This is how it's always been. We know you people now. I mean, we've been documenting it for so long now. Like we have all the evidence and I'm just one guy like unapologetically biracial and proud biracial awareness, many, many others. And there's more to come. We've already documented all this stuff, and we've seen all your little Blackistan gaslighting tactics. The stuff is old, but all you can really offer us is just the trolling crap now. Talking about, you speak negatively about black people, but it's like you guys speak negatively about mulattoes and biracials with all your conspiracy theories and light skin hate and all the other crap. Like, you're going to get what you give. See, they don't, they're uncomfortable with the pushback. They really are dependent on you guys being a subordinate class to them to help boost their ego up. They're really dependent on keeping you underneath blackness so they can punk you to feel better about themselves. And I'm sitting here like, why? You can get a better deal elsewhere and you can literally just build your own shit, do your own thing. What the hell do you need to consult with them for? They're not paying you. You're just giving them free labor. It's just completely retarded in today's day and age. For these Bantu butt kissing mulattoes to act like suckers. I really don't get it. What do you guys have to say about this? Let me know in the comments.